Hello, GovCon winners, and welcome back to my channel. We're going to dig into a topic that I am asked a lot about recruiting. Now, when I say recruiting, I am not just referring to I need to fill a mental health coordinator position for the Air Force. How do I go about finding that person for this contract? I'm speaking blanket recruiting. You know, I'm in construction and I want to be able to offer more services, pick up more bids throughout the United States, but I can't really find any other companies to really partner with. How am I going to do work in Idaho? I don't know anyone in Idaho. I get that a lot. Or maybe, hey, you know, I'm really passionate. I love this area. Um, I'm bidding on contracts and I know I can do all the work, but how am I going to do all the work for the client and work on my business? I'm not going to have enough time. Perhaps you're in the third category. You're seeking to fill different positions because you're bidding on kind of staff augmentation. Perhaps you need a resume for a proposal or you need a resume because you need to hire the person on for a particular body of work. Or finally, you're looking to expand your team and it could be you're looking for someone through Upwork, Fiverr, you wanna bring them on as an employee. So regardless, if you're looking to bring on an employee, a 1099, you need a partner, a teaming partner, you're looking for something involving a human being, we're going to talk all about it and I have something special for y'all too. First and foremost, why I bring this up, because so many of the stories start with, I found this teaming partner. Oh my gosh, Kizzy, they were amazing. They were so amazing. They were referred to me. It was great. Oh, it was great. It was great. Fast forward. Y'all know what happened. Ends in like a lawsuit. I'm serious. I've heard like two of these stories in the past week. One of the individuals had a payout. Another one, I think they're still in the middle of the lawsuit. Hey, I've been involved in lawsuits before, so please don't, don't think I'm judging. That's not my point. I've never been in these type of lawsuits before because after being burned so much, I'm able to share with you all <laughs> what I've learned. I laugh because, man, I'm, I had a big old bear target to be scammed on my head. And that's not for y'all, my GovCon winners. It's not you guys. That's not you, none of y'all, Okay. So first and foremost, whenever you are recruiting, right, you're looking for a person to do something for you. You must be honest with yourself and identify the criteria. What are you looking for from that person or that company or that mentor? What are you looking for? What is it? What are the skills? Are there certifications? Are there accreditations? Is there a location or that they need to be in? Is there language? What is it that you need them to offer? Also, what's really important is you want to write that list, type it, or put it in your phone. You need to set it down and go back to it the next day so that you do not miss anything. You do not want to miss anything. And there may be times when you're like, I don't, I don't know. I just need someone to, to be able to paint. I just need a painter. Okay, well, maybe go online and look up painting, painting openings to see the different words or descriptions that others have used that could help trigger you and help with this process. Because starting off, you need a criteria. You need something in which you are to help attract those you want in and to repel those you don't want. So it's really, really important. Also, feel free to ask. Ask someone on your team. Ask a colleague. Put it in the comments below. Reach out to me. Send me an email. I'll let you know. Ask. Don't hesitate to do that. Next thing that's super, super important. It's not about how much you're going to pay them. It's not about how much you're going to pay for this position. It's none of that. The next item is you must obtain references as well as any type of sample work. It could be pictures, it could be an evaluation, it could be a video of them, and you need to reach out to their references. It is so important. There are so many organizations out there that ask for references, and then they never check them. How do I know? Because my flagship company has employed 
many, many people, hundreds of people throughout the years, never, <laughs> other than if someone's applying for a government position in the Office of Personnel Management will mail um, this survey that you have to fill in, you know, like you're taking an old school test. Other than that, the only other calls are, um, you know, John Smith, who's employed um, with you is in the middle of uh, applying for a mortgage. That is all. This is going to tell you everything by doing this. You're now going to speak with people who can give you some insight. If it's in an employment situation, legally, there are only certain things that they can tell you, and it may vary by state. Understood. If we're talking about teaming partners or you need to find a list of vendors, that's the hot thing. Everyone says to me, oh, I want to create this list of certified approved vendors. Yeah, that's great. Angie's list. Okay, got it. I'm not, <laughs> listen, I'm not dinging you. What I'm trying to get at is you got to be, you got to make sure that those you put on this list are phenomenal because they're a reflection of you. Every single person is a reflection of you. Have you noticed anytime a person does something and is captured on social media, what do they do? Oh, I found their employer. I went on LinkedIn. This is where they work. Internet, you guys know what to do. And typically they're fired or people will leave bad reviews about their business. Everyone is a reflection of you. I'm not suggesting that's gonna to happen to you. I'm just sharing that you want a very concise, condensed list. You don't need a, like a huge directory. You don't need an Angie's list unless you're trying to start a new business and compete with that. That's cool. That's awesome. And tell us more. But as far as people for you, you want very nice, tight, condensed list. The other thing is you may want to give them something to do, like um, kind of like a test, quote unquote. You're giving them a sample of what they're going to be expected to do. So then you can see how they're actually going to do it. And I understand in some of the industries and government contracting, you may not be able to do that, but perhaps you can visit their job site, ask for more photos. Can you show me a video? Things of that nature are super duper helpful because we've been in situations where we would ask for, <laughs> I love this one because we got bamboozled y'all. Yeah, be careful. We asked for sample work and this person provided something, but it was something that so many people worked on so that when the person was brought on to actually work on that particular project, they didn't do well because the sample that they gave was representative of a team effort. So that's why it's also important for some of these opportunities, you may want to give them something. Hey, you know, as part of the selection process, you're going to be asked to complete a task. We're going to give that to you, something of that nature. It's very, very um, common in the whole uh, selection employment arena to do things of this nature. And the reason is you only want to select in the best. You're not a charity. You're an entrepreneur. If you want to start a nonprofit, please do so but you want to bring in the best because they're a reflection of you. Next tip is you got you to talk to them. Whether it's Zoom, it's on the phone, whether you're speaking with them or your recruiter speaking with them, you need to have set questions that you are to ask this person, this company, teaming partner, whomever, that you need to at least be able to, to determine how do they communicate. Very, very important. This says a lot. For instance, I had a meeting with someone who wanted to partner. They really wanted to take their medical staffing from the state level and apply it to the federal government. I know the business owner from a group I'm involved in. So I was really excited, really looking forward to it. And I was on a conference call with this person's team and just yours truly. During that call, I learned a lot about how she led and I, I didn't like it. It didn't sit well with me because what's really important is the culture of all my companies and whomever we're partnering with, we're bringing on as an employee or 1099, they must reflect and be a good 
fit for the culture. And it wasn't there. Uh, she ran more of like a dictatorship and a hierarchical type organization. And I could just tell by the way that they all interacted that it, it kind of explained why some other things occurred with this person. And I didn't want any part of it because this person made it seem to that their situation was due to people in their company. And in reality, when you're the owner or you're the CEO or either you're the manager or the project manager falls on, yeah, on you. And so I just didn't get a good feeling. It was a big flag. And I adore this person. Um, I'm friendly with this person. I'm still in a group with this person, not partnering with them. So it was great that that happened. Super important. The next thing is, and this really pertains to if you're going to form some type of partnership with someone, like um, you're teaming, when I say partnership, not a legal entity, or you're bringing someone on as a 1099. So anything and everything other than an employee, you need the right paperwork. So what I have for you all, some basic paperwork that we use for free, it's gcwdocs.co, gcwdocs, D-O-C-S, dot C-O. Because what I have found is often whenever there's some type of situation where a contractor thinks they're owed more or the um, prime believes that the contractor isn't pulling their weight per se, it boils down to these key documents. For instance, I've heard these horror stories of people not knowing that they were 1099. They thought they were an employee. That should never, ever, ever happen. That's horrible. So you want to make sure you have all the proper paperwork. There are also these situations where there's disagreement over expectation. So you want to make sure what you can do with these documents and a teaming agreement you can outline, here's what's expected for this work. You will get two FTEs and here's who you would receive. Or you are going to work on the flooring and you're going to paint and you're also going to help with the fencing. And here's the payment that you will receive. Like this provides the opportunity for you to set the expectations. Your level setting, you are demystifying. It's something that I learned from Sandler sales classes I used to attend um, a while ago is you're demystifying because what happens is often these disagreements come from not having clarity and we're, we're not mind readers. And so what happens is we fill in these blanks based on our own experience. So then a person may think, well, I'm doing X, Y, Z. Why am I not getting paid for it? Or I'm actually doing more. Why am I not being paid for that? So it's very important to use these documents. So there's never any questions and they're so helpful. What we also do in addition to having these documents is we create a purchase order so that the said 1099 or the vendor is well aware of the financial arrangement. And this really saved us. There was a situation not too long ago where someone believed that they were owed a significant amount of money. And they said that they were going through all of their banking documents and they realized that we failed to pay them, let's say it was $100,000. And, and they presented this, this purchase order and said, hey, here's evidence that you're supposed to pay us this money. Well, in reality, what had happened was that was sent an error, an email followed stating such, a new purchase order was issued, and this actually had been re-communicated with them a year prior. So bottom line is, hey, stuff happens, got it. But at the end of the day, my flagship company was covered because proper purchase order was there. We had all the email chains leading up to and showing that you were not owed this money. And so it's great because you never want to be put in a position or a situation where you're in some type of legal dispute, or you have a team member who thinks you're trying to get over on them. That is the worst 
feeling ever. That is why many people exit companies because they don't feel valued. They don't feel heard. They don't feel respected. They wonder why is the CEO making $25 million a year and I'm only making 70 or I'm only making 500 or I'm only making 30. So you do not want to carry all that kind of energy into your firm. So documentation is really key. Having those documents, GCW docs, .co, having all that, keeping all emails is really vital too, because you never know, stuff comes up. I've had that happen where I wondered, oh, was I owed some money? Is I not owed money? Things happen. It's water under the bridge. Super duper important. The other thing when it comes to recruiting and bringing on people is there are a plethora of systems to help you to make this easier. Because it probably, as you're listening, you may be thinking like, oh my gosh, it seems daunting. At the end of the day, it's no different than you trying to get a deal on something. What do you do? You want to save money on a new TV? You research it. It's no different when you're going through this process to bring on a team member. You have to kind of think of it in that same lens. Don't overthink. Don't think you have to have these beautiful job descriptions or these fancy platforms it's no different than you trying to hunt down the best, you know, you know, after Christmas sale or before Christmas sale or whatever sale, same mentality, okay? And you're going to do it. I know you're going to do it because you're amazing. You're a GovComp winner. You're watching. You made it this far. And what's going to happen is you're going to end up with an amazing team. So you'll have that nice condensed list of vendors. And I have a bonus kizzy tip for you is you ask for referrals. Oh, hold up though. Hold up. Because you may be thinking, why didn't you lead with that? Oh, hold up though. We got to talk about this. You don't just ask everyone for a referral. You ask your top players. That's who you ask. Those on your team or those in your circle that who you admire or you know that they do amazing work. That's who you ask. Or maybe you're somewhere and you're like, man, who painted these walls? I need to meet that person. That's what you do, right? Then you take those referrals and you vet them accordingly is what you do. Because sometimes the referrals, man, woo, they're going to be home runs. Oh my gosh. Other times, right? Maybe not. But what's key is you're selecting in the talent that works for you and you're selecting out what doesn't. And what's beautiful about this amazing world is there is a place for all of us. So if someone's not a good fit, that's okay, that's okay. So check out gcwdocs.co. Please subscribe, hit that notification button, comment below, and don't forget, everything is possible.